Hello. In searching through my prior videos, I realized, um, I did make a video on this device, but, uh, how would you like it if I told you it got deleted? So, here I go again. Um, for those of you who have already seen it, for those of you who have not, or maybe new subscribers to my channel, a little bit of an introduction is in order. This little device is actually a, an MP3 player. But it can play more than just MP3s. It can also play text files. It can play... Um, I, can it play HTML? can't remember. I can't remember if this can play uh, web documents or not. I know that it can play text documents. Um, it can play music. It's got a radio on board. You can even make recordings with it. Let's go ahead and switch this device on. Or actually, no, I'm going to give you a little tour of the device first. Stereo speakers up at the top. This button here, if I push it. 10.49 p.m. and 40 seconds Monday, February 4th, 2013. Brings up a talking clock. And that might be, for those of you who are not familiar with this kind of technology, that may be one of the things you notice. Is... There is no screen. There is no screen because the entire interface is audio-driven. So I'm going to go ahead and just walk you through the controls here. So we have our directional pad, our menu, which also functions as an... Or, I'm sorry, no. Um, I was about to say functions as an OK key, but it does not. Um, the OK key is actually down here, this little green circle. You've got your standard numeric keypad, and if you can see in the light, you see the keys have a different um, texture to them. This is supposed to make it much easier to navigate by feel. And then the C, we have the C button for clear, the green O for OK. On the right hand side we have our play and pause which also functions as our power switch and a camera that doesn't want to focus. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. There we go. Um, sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. So we got our play pause, which is our power up here. We also have a record button, key lock, Reset switch. On the back is our battery. The manufacturer of this device is known as HIMS, the Human Information Management Service of Korea. You see this sticker here that says GW Micro. When I got this, they were the distributors for HIMS products in the United States. I've had the device for several years now. The company HIMS has since branched off and started to distributing its own products here in the United States. On the left hand side, we have our mode switch, and I'll show you what that does in a little bit. Volume control, and our SD card slot. This particular device also contains 4 gigabytes of onboard storage, but after a little mishap with the flash memory and my Macintosh having to reformat everything, I've decided to just keep everything on the SD card uh, just just for, you know, just as a just in case. So we've got our lanyard up here at the top for a neck strap. The device also has Bluetooth, and it allows you to hook up a Bluetooth headset, which really allows you to listen to your books completely hands-free. I'll explain more about the books in a little bit. So we've got our headphone jack and external microphone. The device can also record, I think, um, I don't know if I went over the formats, it can record MP3 and it, rec and it can also record DAISY files. I'll explain more about what DAISY files are. Actually, no, I'll, I'll go ahead and explain now. Um, DAISY stands for Digital Accessible Information System. There's also DAISY NIMAS, which is the National Institute... Um, 
Oh, shoot, I can't remember the acronym off the, offhand, but, I, but I'm pretty sure that has to do with instruction. Uh, oh, I, now I remember. It's the National Instructional Materials um, Accessibility Standard. That's it. So NIMAS, National Instructional Material Accessibility Standard, which is also a, which is a format of DAISY. Again, Digital Accessible Information System. And all that is, is in, 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 in ABC Everyday Terms, is think of it as an audiobook or a textbook. And by text, I mean it's read by the electronic speech. And I'll, again, I'll, I'll hit the uh, uh, clock switch to give you a demonstration of that. 10.54 p.m. and 10 seconds Monday, February 4th, 2013. Okay. What... Um, that, that voice there will read electronic files such as textbooks and whatnot. Now, why exactly do we need this specialized format? Well, it all comes down to one word. Publishers. The publishers see a need to make their material accessible, and that's where players like this come in. But at the same time, they don't want to take a chance that somebody, because you need to have a qualifying disability in order to use this. Well, not this player, but you need to use, um, you need it to use a lot of the content um, that this player can provide. And I'll go over what it can play in a little bit when we go through the menus. So, um, you need to have a qualifying disability. What is a qualifying disability? I have issues reading print. I have issues reading print for long periods of time. Those both, automatic. So you need to have low vision, you need to be blind, you need to have some other form of, um, of a reading or print disability, such as processing issues, in order to qualify for these specialized books. And the reason they do that is to allow people to gain access to the information while at the same time keeping it under wraps. They don't, the publishers in particular, don't want somebody just getting online, downloading the books, and then suddenly, um, suddenly redistributing them. Now, what if that does happen? Well, for instance, let's say somebody's hacked into your account, because a lot of the distribution happens online now, of these specialized books. Let's say somebody's hacked into your account and gotten into your books. Wanted to resell them, right? Well... You couldn't play them. You would never be able to play them unless you had the specialized equipment, like this player, or like the player that the National Library Service provides, or some sort of software package. If you try to play this book, or any of these books on this device, in a, in a normal uh, MP3 player, you will get a message that says... Um, you'll get a message that says that you have you are not authorized to play this protected book. At least that's what happens with the NLS. I'm not sure what happens with Bookshare. But um, basically, if you don't have the qualifying disability, you do not have the specialized equipment, you couldn't listen to this book even if you wanted to. You could not pop, this bo pop, pop these books into Windows Media Player. They'd never play back. I even tried that. I even tried playing an RFB and D, now, now known as Learning Ally, several years ago. Uh... I went ahead and took a, a, a Learning Ally book, and again, back then they were RFB and D, Reading for the Blind and Dyslexic, and I popped it into Windows Media Player. I'm really interested, just in, for experimental purposes, just to see what would happen. Well, remember how I talked to you about how it was organized like a web page? Without that organizational structure in place, Windows Media Player completely scrambled everything. So even if you got the book into Media Player, it would never turn out right in the first place. So you need the specialized software or hardware to even to, to organize the stuff in the first place. Now, what sort of stuff could you play? Let's turn on the player. File name 07 Orinoco Flow Sail Away M4. Elapse time 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Total time 4 minutes and 26 seconds. One of one. Pause. So, it gave us the information about the media file we're currently listening to, which is an M4A file. Um, the player can play M4A, MP3, WAV, um, I think WAV, WMA. And the reason is because under the hood, this is running a specialized version of Microsoft Windows. It's very, very condensed. 
And you couldn't, for instance, sideload applications. That's not what the device is for. But you need to have some sort of underlying architecture. For instance, there's another player which has just been redesigned, the Victor Reader Stream, and also the uh, the National Library Service's own player. Both of those run a condensed version of Linux. The Book Sense by Hims, as well as the uh, Plex Talk Pocket and Bookport Plus sister products from uh, Plex Talk and the American Printing House for the Blind, respectively, both of those um, also run Windows. So you can you can play your MP3 files. So to back out of here to get to the main list, let's go ahead and hit the uh, cancel button. Which, if you're completely, if you cannot see it all. Feel along the keypad, I would say, for the number 5. There's a dot, and the 5 is indented. Move down to the 0. You'll pass the 8. It's a typical telephone keypad. So pass the 8 down to the 0. That's also indented. And you'll find a raised key on the bottom left corner of the keypad. That is your cancel key, so hit that. So let's go back again. Okay, we can't. That's because right now, I'm in my music folder... Let's go ahead and hit the mode switch and go through what we can play here. Daisy. Title, when will Jesus bring the pork chops? Heading 116. Elapsed time, 3 hours, 23 minutes and 13 seconds. Remaining time, 5 hours, 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Now, this is an NLS book. If I arrow up and down... Level 2. Level 1. Okay, that's the navigational heading. Let me back out to the main list. So I've got seven books. If we arrow up... A guide to high school success for students with disabilities. One of seven. So let's arrow down through the rest of the titles. When will Jesus bring the pork chops? The Oregon Trail. Seeing beyond blindness. Billy Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Five of seven. Believe it or not, I've listened to this book three times, and the reason is because the voice acting is just so good. They hire professional readers to read these books, just like they would of a, like a CD book that you would borrow from the library. No pity. People with disabilities forging a new civil rights movement. Six of seven. This particular title I had to do as required reading for one of my courses back during my undergrad studies, and I found it very interesting, so I just had to get it again. Avenger. Star Trek. Odyssey. Book three. Seven of seven. <laughs> yes, I'm definitely a Star Trek fan, so let's let's back out of here. NLS four of five. So we got our NLS books. NFB Newsline three of five. Actually, let's let's zero down back to the NLS. NLS four of five. I should explain. National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, which I wish they would change the name a little bit, but everybody knows it as the NLS. What do they provide? They provide books to patrons with qualifying disabilities. Again, uh, blindness, low vision, or any other sort of print disability that would that would hinder your ability to read a printed textbook. So we got the National Library Service, and and this is these books are from the federal government. So the collection is. Um, Mm, it's not as good as some of the other services available, so let's go through here. Record, five of five. Record. I talked to you earlier about how the device can record DAISY files. Now, I'm not about to actually go into how to do that on this video, if anybody wants me to show them, because this just got a firmware update. Earlier, uh, the, the update was early January, and I got a, I got a um, email late January about the firmware update. And that allows you to, to, to record files in the specialized format. But again, I, if you want me to go into the details on that, I will in a separate video. NLS, 4 of 5. NFB Newsline, 3 of 5. National Federation of the Blind, they have a Newsline service. I personally don't use it. Learning Ally, 2 of 5. Learning Ally, again, RFB and D. So if we go in here... Assistive technology for students who are blind or visually impaired... A guide to assessment. One of one. So that's the book that I have from Learning Ally. Learning Ally, two of five. Bookshare, one of five. So we have Bookshare. Assistive technology in the classroom, one of eleven. Now Bookshare's books, you notice that with the National Library Service and audio, um, 
and uh, RFB and Learning Ally, all of those were audio. This particular book is through is read through the electronic speech. So, if you can imagine the voice that's been announcing all these menus, uh, reading your books, it, it it takes some getting used to, and absolutely no electronic voice that I've seen that I've heard. For those of you who are familiar with the with the speech engines that are out there. Um, I, I, it's been a while since I've used this, so I completely forgot what the speech engine is in the book sense. But the speech engine, the new victory to stream, the acapella voices, they're extremely crystal clear, but absolutely no TTS can pronounce the word Cardassian properly, which I thought was just weird. Uh, would it be nice? I haven't seen... Have I? I have to go back and see what the what the additions are to this device's firmware update. But if it doesn't already have it, what would be nice is a is a pronunciation dictionary where you can go in and make it pronounce things correctly. Even if you have to, uh, for example, Captain Jean Luc Picard, um, the book player will often pronounce it as Jean Luc. Okay, that's that's not. That's not, um, you know, that's not the TTS's fault. You, you have to treat the TTS, the text to speech engine, the, the electronic voice, as somebody who is reading these terms for the very first time in your in their life. Okay, who's never, you know, who may not be familiar with Star Trek, who who may not be familiar with with Harry Potter, because uh, I've noticed that some of the spells, um, it, it doesn't seem to pronounce right either. Again. It, it it just you, get, you just you have to treat it as as somebody who's never seen this stuff before. But let's go ahead and hit hit play by hitting the OK key, and I'll just give you a quick demonstration. It's going to be reading a lot of the technical uh, material, sort of like the terms of service of using this book. But it'll be something, so you can just listen to what it sounds like to read. Okay, so right now we're loading the book. And while this is happening, for those of you who... You... 2005, I, Dell, assistive technology in the classroom. Assistive technology in the classroom. Enhancing the school experiences of students with disabilities. Amy G. Dell, the College of New Jersey. Deborah A. Newton, Southern Connecticut State University. Okay, so you have an idea. That's what it sounds like to have the voice reading to you. And um, let's go through our mode selection again. So we went through our daisy player. Document reader. No list. Document reader. And again, you can read Microsoft Word files. You can read text files. Um, I think you might be able to read Braille files. I don't know. Let's see. And for those of you who are wondering, the dot brf is a specialized file format um to work with um files that have been produced in commercial in uh in braille and particularly for braille formatting because the formatting for braille on a printed on a physical page is compl is different than what it would be on a on a printed page because the braille itself physically it's larger and it takes up more space radio so we have a radio, we have an FM radio. Media. 07 Orinoco Flow Sail Away M4, 55 of 96. So we have in the media folder, in the media mode, we've got our music. Music, folder, 3 of 6. Miss audio, folder, 2 of 6. Miscellaneous audio. Audiobooks, folder, 1 of 6. <gasps> audiobooks. This is where you would put audiobooks that you've gotten from your local library, for instance. The daisy mode is, again, for the specialized books. This is for just regular audio books that you could get off of a CD. Misc audio, folder, two of six. Music, folder, three of six. Podcasts, folder, four of six. You can put podcasts on here. Radio, folder, five of six. Um, I believe you're able to record radio stations and they will go into this folder. Record, folder, six of six. Record. Now... 
this is where standard MP3 recordings would go. You heard that there was a record folder in the in the Daisy mode. That's where the Daisy recordings, the um, the specialized audio file recordings, would go. This is for everyday MP3 recordings without any specialized formatting. Is a player like this worth it when you have um, when you have things like an iPod Touch? For the moment, yes. The player runs $450. Now, let me turn this off so we can conserve battery power. Actually, before I do that, if you hold, if you press and hold the OK key... Battery level 5. Battery level 5, which means 50%. Um, so, what... Um, so, is this player worth it? Yes, it, uh, yes it is, because... Um, there is a Daisy player for the iPhone and iPod Touch. There is not a Daisy player for Android. And at the moment, none of them, and I do mean none of them, play books from the National Library Service. The National Library Service is extremely tied down, and as a result, you really need one of these special hardware players in order to play the files. Also, it's worth it if you have issues with touchscreens. Excuse me. Not everybody works well with a touchscreen. You know, some people will have issues, uh, tactile, sensi tactile uh, uh, sensitivity issues, where they may not be able to work with a touchscreen all that well. Um, so as a result, having something a lot more tactile like this is definitely a good approach to use. That being said... Um, would I like to see an end to these players? No, but I would definitely like to see more mainstream competition ramping up. I'd like to see more software available for the iPod and iPhone. One of the reasons this player can play so many formats is because it costs about as much as an, as an iPod Touch. Not very many people will order it because again you know it 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 really harkens down this this player is not necessarily a lot of people would see this and think what the heck is that what are the things you may have noticed that it does it doesn't have a screen that would definitely confuse a lot of a lot of people who are not up on this technology or may not know somebody who who uses the technology so the market's very small and as a result it's really nice to be able to Use this as your all-in-one, not just for your talking books, not just for your mainstream audiobooks, but also for your, for your, you could, you could make grocery lists. In fact, if I press and hold the mode button. Start calculator. Press the mode button for more than two seconds to exit calculator. This is really nice because you could record your, 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 your grocery list. For example, we talked about the daisy recording, the way things are structured. I'll give you an example. You could have meats in one section. You could have your your bathroom supplies in another section. You could have your fish in another your uh, your uh, I'm sorry your uh, dairy in another section. You get the idea, and you can easily use these arrows to skip back and forth. And then with the calculator, you could go in no matter where you are. You could go into the calculator and and add up everything that you're getting and figure out how much you're gonna you're gonna spend. So. This is a really, really nice little device to have. For the price, I would say that you're getting quite a bit. Um, so would I recommend it? It completely depends. This is, um, in terms of the specialized players, the handheld devices, this is the smallest on the market. And for somebody who has uh, tactile sensitivity issues, they may be better off with a player with bigger buttons. Right now, that would be the Victor Reader Stream. Um, or they might want a player with a lot more robust recording capabilities. This device just got Daisy recording, and it's not as finely tuned as something like the Plex Talk Pocket or the Bookport Plus. Those devices were designed with audio files in mind and really targeted towards people who wanted to make professional quality recordings with an accessible device. Um, so it depends on your needs. But if you're in the market for one, this is definitely worth a look. Personally, I like it a lot. I really like it a lot. The only issue that I've had with it 
is sometimes my Macintosh will disconnect it. I don't know why it just happens, even though the connections are solid, the Macintosh will some re for some reason think that the internal flash disk um, of the BookSense has disconnected. And as a result, the other night, in fact, I had to reformat everything, and that's where the SD card comes in play. Um, so I just switched it off to save battery. I don't know if I told you, but we've got stereo speakers up here. We got a microphone down here, indicator light, power supply, USB port, and again, we have our battery and our battery release latch. That's basically all there is to it. I mean, this is a very robust little player. Very compact. Um, you got the straps so you can wear it. So it, I, 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 I've used it for several years, and I really like it a lot. There is also another model that I've seen. It's called this one's the BookSense XT, and XT I believe is probably something for like Extend. And what that means is. This particular free unit has the FM radio and it has the Bluetooth, and it also has the 4 gigs of built-in storage. There's another unit below this that costs a little bit less, I think by about maybe $50 or $100, that doesn't have the Bluetooth, doesn't have the FM radio, and doesn't have the built-in storage. Those three features are unique to this model. There's also another model, the BookSense DS. That's the one that I saw in person a couple years ago. DS stands for display. So up in this area in the top, they moved the speaker over to the back and taken out, I think they've taken out either the FM radio or the Bluetooth, one of the two, and they've put in its place a small LED display. Now, why would you want that if you can't see? Well, there are a number of reasons you might want this. For instance, some people are able to see, but they have processing issues that make reading difficult, and they may need the extra help of speech output. Having a display to follow along with so they can have it read to them while they read can help them understand. Also, if you yourself are not um, technically savvy and want to have somebody else work on um, work on getting files to the device. I know my uncle is one such person who um, usually has somebody else load the books onto the device for him. In that instance, having the display helps because not everybody's familiar with electronic speech. In fact, I'm very interested to know in the comments how many of you out there understood what this device was saying. Um, for those of you who, for those of you who did not, having a visual aid would help a lot as far as navigating the menus if you're trying to help somebody out. So, you know, it's it's definitely a plus. Also, I can see for a classroom situation because without the without the um, without the display, if you're wearing earbuds, then nobody knows what you're doing. You know. And so for a school situation, the display comes in handy because the teacher can understand what the device is saying, and they can also more easily determine, hey, is this student on task, or are they listening to the latest uh, uh, Linkin Park album or whatever? You know, so there's definitely cases to be made to have a display on the device. It all comes down to your need, but it's definitely worth a look. But uh, what do you guys think? Thank you for watching, comments are welcome, and have a nice day.